ahead and make our way in here. Great to see everybody here this evening. All right, I'd like to start the service off a little different this evening. You may go and be seated. Um, as you know, there's a lot of crazy things going on in Afghanistan, and, and uh, I thought we should pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in that country right now. People have been saved the same way we saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and uh, based on things we're hearing, they'll be dead within the next few weeks. Um, my wife saw a neat little quote today. It said, uh, in Afghanistan, we go to church, and then we die. In America, we go to church, unless something else comes up. And uh, it's a convicting thought, it really is. And uh, Christians in Afghanistan right now are really facing it. They're going to really face it. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, saw the, the plane scene, how sad that was, people so desperate to get out of the country. And, and so I just think it'd be really good if we would just pray for them for a little while. So just, just for a few moments, silently to yourselves, and I'll come up and, and kind of close us in prayer, and then we'll get on with our service and have the song service. But let's just pray for our Christian brothers and sisters. We'll see them in heaven someday, and they'll have a lot more powerful story to tell than we will. But... Uh, Let's think about them tonight and pray for them. Bad eyes are closed. My daughter even came up to me and said, Daddy, what about the children? And uh, unfortunately, there's no mercy on the children of Christians in those countries, too. Father, thank you for Christianity. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that we are saved. A group of people, Lord, and forgive me, Lord, for being so comfortable in my faith in this country. But I've thought about this whole this whole thing going on right now and how I came off the road 13 straight weeks of groups of people that wanted to hear preaching and they brought in speakers from all over the country to preach at different camps and conferences and then our government still allows us freely to do that and now Lord because America has moved out of the way a group of evil people and that's all we can call them Lord they're just evil people they need Jesus desperately, but they're evil. An evil group of people have come in, and they're going to terrorize our family. Lord, we've never met those brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, but, Lord, they're family. Thank you for saving those precious Christians over there. Lord, I pray for them that you give them the grace they need as they endure what's coming. And, Lord, forgive us. It's taken this event to make us think about it because, Lord, there's Christians underground in Iran right now fearing for their lives, China, North Korea. Lord, I pray for our president now, who's got to be one of the weakest leaders on the globe and an embarrassment to any kind of leadership. Please save his soul before his mind is completely gone. And Lord, I just pray for our country too. Lord, especially tonight, we lift up those brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and Lord, may we as Christians in America learn a valuable lesson from it and to, to not take for granted what we have. 
Lord, forgive me for even thinking about complaining about any kind of mediocre, mediocre persecution that we experience here in America. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'd help us as Christians in America to learn how precious it is to, to die for the cause of Christ. We may never experience that. Lord, I wonder how many Christians in America would be able to even do that because we've been so comfortable. Lord, this is a valuable lesson to challenge us to pray for our brothers and sisters around the globe. It's a valuable lesson to be challenged in our faith. It's a valuable lesson to be challenged in our, in our work as we spread the gospel in a country that's still free for now. Lord, I just I thank you for what America has done for Afghanistan for so long and that there has been peace for there for a while and Christians have been able to, to do things and build churches, but Lord, now we're gone. And thankfully, Lord, even as America left, God, you're still there with those precious people. No matter what goes on in this world, I'd much rather have the presence of God than the presence of any strong military. Lord, be with our brothers and sisters over there. Be with pastors who have to make very hard decisions. And be with those because they don't know who to trust. And snitches and the Taliban are a ruthless group of people. Lord God, I pray that maybe even some Taliban will get saved as a result of the testimony of Christians. Lord, most of all, may you be glorified. Thank you for faith. Thank you for the faith. And thank you, Lord, for the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. All right. Um, stay with me, please. Number 292. 292. 252. 252. I apologize. 252. <clears throat> what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me White as snow, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of G. On the last verse, <clears throat> this is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So glad you're here. Isn't God good? I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, if, is there any visitors tonight that have not received a visitor card? Or in the back, they would love to give you a visitor card. Just raise your hand. Do we miss anybody this, this evening? Just raise your hand so you can get a gift in the back uh, after the service. Anybody like that here? No? Thank you for praying for preacher tonight. Uh, you'll see, uh, some of you will see uh, two new buses up, uh, uh, up on the hill. And... Um, but uh, that was an inside joke to Nikki at staff meeting today. You know, me and Preacher are excited about the buses, and I'm sure probably everybody else is too. And um, so we come in this morning, and, and I said, How oh, did you see those buses? No. So then for the next hour commenced, we gave her a hard time. But uh, 
We're super thankful. We drove. It was a long day yesterday, but uh, those buses did great. They're, they're in immaculate shape, and we thank uh, Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church for gifting them to us and filling them up with gas, putting new tires on them, and maintaining them completely and gave us maintenance records with them. And, and they have cool air horns. So I don't, I mean, me and Preacher were annoying people 14 hours all the way from Tennessee to here. Mm, we're just blowing them. About what? It didn't matter. Just if we thought we wanted to. Then he'd blow it, then I'd blow it, then I'd blow it, and he'd blow it. And uh, went through a couple tunnels, and I'm sure anybody was annoyed by us through the tunnels. But, uh, but they ran great, and we're super thankful and excited to see what the Lord's going to do through that. So... Thank you for praying for that and excited to be in church tonight, thankful to be in church tonight. And uh, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, we thank you for the day. We have the opportunity to meet at church. Lord, as the preacher said earlier, Lord, we're thankful we can meet without any fear of someone coming in and breaking up the meeting. Lord, I ask you to help us to be more grateful, more thankful. And uh, would you meet with us tonight, be with the preacher, put your hand upon him. And may we listen in your son's name. Amen. All right. All right, you may be seated. It was a great trip. Big thank you to Brother Bussy for getting hooked. I just want to make an observation. Since he's been here, we've gotten three buses. Yeah. It's just, it's in the name, Bussy. All right, but anyway, I, uh, I couldn't resist that. Although it was, I thought it was funny yesterday. The Holy Spirit laughed too. I, I will say this. <laughs> He and Brother Herdman conspired against me. They gave me the slower of the two buses yesterday, so I had to drive the slow bus, and that was, I struggled with that all day. I got over, I got over my bitterness, that's a true story, I got over my bitterness by lunch, but we had a good time, and uh, it was a blessing, so. All right, I, I actually wanted to read this one because it's Brother Spivey, Miss Paulette told us about it, and I love our, the Spiveys, and appreciate them so much, and you'll see at the top of the letter, he says, I really get to go, and there's nothing like, it's one thing to read it, but I still remember him waving his hand saying, I really get to go, talking about going to heaven, and he says, I have a passion for souls. I would like to share with you that since I was saved by the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and washed by the blood of our Savior, I've never been the same. I want to continue to present the gospel to a lost and dying world. Remember this, any person, man, woman, boy or girl can be saved by asking Jesus Christ in your heart. Repent of your sin and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ will forgive your sin. It is so simple to ask him to come in your, in your heart. Ask him today. I was saved in September 1974. I asked God to forgive me, and he did. Now I really get to go to heaven because I got saved. Our work is truly flourishing in the country of Mexico. We are now working on the fourth Bible college that IBOM is responsible for in the country of Mexico. And every week we are seeing souls come to the Lord for salvation of their souls. Please continue to pray for our work in Mexico. We are so grateful the Lord is working on hearts to be a blessing to build churches in Mexico. Thank you folks from Asheville, North Carolina, who built a church, and other from Kansas City, Missouri. Thank God the Lord Jesus is being glorified. Two churches in a month for the IBOM ministry in Mexico. To God be the glory in Christ, Dr. Luther Spivey. And if you don't know him, uh, it's also a blessing to his wife. Brother Mrs. George, remember them very well. Spivey's were in our Missions Jubilee. One of the first ones we had, I think, in this new building. No, no, it was in the old building still. And God just used him, and, and, and uh, our church just fell in love with him. He organized a trip for us to go to Jamaica to give the pickup truck to the Jamaican preacher. And, and we supported him, and we've been supporting him for years. We just love the Spivey's. So let's pray for them in a, a right now and just lift them up in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for the Spivey's. And, Lord, thank you that we really get to go. And Lord, as we already prayed about our Afghanistan brothers and sisters, Lord, thankful, so thankful that no matter what happens, that they will get to see your face if, if tragic things come their way. Lord, thank you for the promise of heaven, and thank you that Brother Spivey and his wife are taking the gospel to Mexico, which is very ripe right now. Continue to bless them and use them as souls continue to get saved there on their south of the border there in Mexico. Continue to be with Brother Spivey's health. I know he's been through it. And, Lord, be with him and his wife, Mrs. Spivey, in a special way again. And thank you for being so good to us and helping us to be a part of their ministry all these years. We sure do love and appreciate you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we're having a handshake and something. All right, number 311. Go ahead and stand with me, please, once you get there. 311, more about Jesus. We'll sing it on that first verse and have a time of fellowship. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, 
More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Go ahead and shake hands. on that second verse as you get back to your seat. More about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be. Showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. 
more about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful say, sing it out, more. On that last verse together. More about Jesus on his throne. Riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming prince. Uh, again. Seated. We're going to look at Psalm 145 this evening, and we will have a special in a second. And then the kids will be dismissed with Brother, Brother Roberto. Um, but before we go forward, I'd like Brother Bedwell to stand up and explain his shirt to everybody here. It's just an accident that he wore this tonight, and then we, we had the prayer time. So go ahead if you don't mind. Maybe you can model a little bit, turn around, dude. Like, are you going to twist pedal? Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd flex that. But anyway, no, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I couldn't resist, man. Love you, man. Right, go ahead and explain your shirt. Thank you for sharing that. I did uh, fail to mention, good to see one of the Mitchell brothers back. And every time one of y'all come, I always say the best one of the five, right? Is that right, Jeff? Every time you agree. <laughs> Gary's just kind of grinning back there. And you've got a daughter getting married soon, right? A daughter and a niece. And uh, wow, y'all got a busy fall for your family. But that's, that's hard to believe. Uh, my day's coming. I may have to call you and cry on your shoulder when my day comes. So. I know your daughter, Lauren, she's a sweetheart, so I know she's gone to camp with us a few times, so we'll be praying for your family. But good to see you up, and that's Dustin back there, too. Good to see Dustin, and I appreciate folk visiting. All right, Psalm 145, let's look at verse number one. Uh, my favorite three books of the Bible, you've heard me say it before, are John, Psalms, and Philippians. Those are my three favorite books of the Bible. Uh, if I have a list of favorite chapters of the Bible, if I were to give you my top five, this would be one of them. I've read Psalm 145 many times. I love the spirit of anticipation here. And I was thinking a lot about Brother Bussey's message a few weeks ago on the right people, the right place, the right time. And I want to piggyback off that a little bit. And I think we need to start gearing ourselves up. The theme is to give this year, and last year it was again. And uh, we really need to start thinking about what's coming. When I say what's coming, I'm not talking about the rapture, even the possible persecution, but what's coming with our, our opportunity as a ministry, as a church, and uh, with, with the things that God has been doing. And I'll get into that more in the message. But look at verse 1. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, 
and shall declare thy mighty acts. So uh, we'll get into that message for tonight. I hope it'll be an encouragement and a blessing to you. And a big thank you again for Brother Bussy and others that have preached this summer on Wednesday nights. At this time, our senior vocal, male vocal, Josh Slater, will sing a special for us. When I think of how he came so far from glory, came and dwelt among the lowly such as I, to suffer shame and such disgrace, on Mount Calvary takes my place. Then I ask myself one question, who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he Pray, not my will, thine for. The answer I may never know. Why he ever loved me so. That to an old rugged cross he would go. For who am I? Then I'm reminded of his word, I'll leave you never. If you'll be true, I give to you life forever. I know there's nothing that I could have done to deserve God's only Son, to fight my battles until they're won. For who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray not my will, thine for. The answer I may never know, why he ever loved me so, that to an old rugged cross he would go, for who am I? Appreciate Miss Lydia's piano playing the last few services, and thank you, Brother Josh, for that special and great challenge. There. Who am I? Who am I? All right, Psalm 145 here. Here we are there. And um, I was taught many years ago, I just had this conversation with somebody today. Oh, thank you, kids, and Brother Robbie, you're dismissed. Sorry about that. And I guess Miss Stacy's interpreting since Lydia's in California, back on the left coast, I mean, west coast. And all right. I was just having this conversation with somebody today, in fact about child rearing, child rearing. And the challenge that I was given many years ago was to teach our children and to teach really, even in church, Sunday school, uh, to look for the treasures of life, the treasures of life. Uh, we talk about the subject of treasure hunting and I've been to the Bahamas several times, you know that, and, and there's people that still go down there to treasure hunt. They want to treasure hunt, they'll go out and snorkel and scuba dive into, into deep places and still trying to find lost treasures. Now, when you are seeking out treasures, on your way of seeking out treasures, you will encounter uh, things that may, may hinder your search for the treasures. You may, for example, if you're scuba diving, you may encounter sharks and you find out what a blessing they are and how kind they are as, as creatures of God and they're not dangerous at all. Um, and then you, you continue your quest on, but but even as you go out into the woods, uh, and you, maybe you're looking for mushrooms, right? I lo who loves mushrooms here, man? Mushrooms are awesome. Mushrooms make everything taste better. 
Uh, I love eating mushrooms, and nobody in my family likes them, so it's a blessing because I get them all to myself. So, um, and Brother Nick and I love mushrooms on our pizza. I mean, we just love mushrooms. But when you, if you go mushroom hunting, which I've actually never done in Missouri, I, I like to let other people do the work, and I enjoy the blessings of their work, amen. But if you go mushroom, mush, what's the sign for mushroom? I forgot the sign for mushroom is. Mushroom, that's right, thanks, Dad. Mushroom. See, even you forget the signs for mushroom hunting, you will, uh, you will encounter poison ivy. You will encounter maybe uh, uneven footing, right? But when you gather those mushrooms and you come back, all of a sudden you forget about uh, the poison ivy or some other things that you may have encountered. It's like this. It's like when we go soul winning or door knocking in America. We can knock on 100 doors, right? And 99 people were kind to us, nice to us. One person was a little bit rude. But when we come back, we often talk about that one person who was rude instead of the 99 that were nice. And I'm afraid that we have allowed our mindsets as Americans to automatically shift to the negative. We, we, we want to find fault in everything, right? We can walk into a beautiful building like this and say, wow, what a beautiful building. And there's one little spot on the rug, but that, that, that's what we're going to talk about all night, right? And I really believe that's what separated David from many of his contemporaries. David had a mindset of, man, everything God does, there's something good there. And you've heard me tell this story before, and I'm leading up to the message for, this, uh, uh, for, the message for tonight. But the story's been told about a father who had two sons, and one was an optimist and one was a pessimist. And it was so bad, the father didn't know how to control the two anymore. So, the, so he decided to go to get, a count, get some counseling. And a counselor gave him an idea to rent two storage units and pack them full of certain items and then send the boys in there and come back with the report. So what he did is he, re he rented the two storage units and he put the brand new toys, brand new gadgets, brand new everything in one room and he put horse manure in the other room. So he put the pessimistic kid in the room with all the nice stuff. He put the optimistic kid in the room with all the manure and several weeks passed. He came back and the counselor said, how'd it go? And he said, horrible. He said, why? He said, when I put my pessimist son into the room with all the new stuff, he complained. He didn't want Nikes. He wanted Adidas. He didn't want a skateboard. He wanted a basketball goal. He didn't want a, a soccer ball. He wanted a football. And anybody would pick a football over a soccer ball or a baseball or a volleyball or anything. Football is always first. But anyway, even a pessimist knows that. But he said, what about that? That was funny. He should have laughed. No, actually, I, I know why he didn't laugh because it's true. Thank you very much for not laughing. All right. So he goes to the second one. He said, what about the second boy? And he says, he opens the door, looks in there, looks at his dad, says, wow. There's got to be a pony in here somewhere. There's a lot of truth to that, church. And as we move forward for the cause of Christ, we have to be aware of the things that are happening globally. I mean, Afghanistan, we mentioned it tonight. And, and we want to pray for them. And I appreciate the testimony of that T-shirt. But that's not where we're living right now, church. Pray for them and think of them and maybe even sometimes we need to send money and support them and all that stuff if, it, if it's viable and all that stuff. But right now in America, this is, this is our opportunity right now. This is our time. And so the title of the message is simply this tonight. Can I just say, can I just say, all right, can I just say, you know, I, I, again, I'm going to challenge the mindset of America today. We have been conditioned because of the news media, conditioned because of sitcoms, conditioned because of of all the things that are out there about finding the negative things. We forget about the mushrooms. We, we complain about the journey to the mushrooms. We forget about the actual treasures we gathered, and we complain about the, the obstacles on the way to the treasures. And so tonight, church, I want to challenge us to understand that what is coming is very, very exciting as a church. I mean, the rapture is on the doorstep, amen? Now, that could still be 20 or 30 years from now, but it also could be 20 or 30 minutes from now. It's already been established, biblically speaking, that there's nothing left on God's calendar that needs to be accomplished before the rapture happens. That's the next event on his calendar. And so if you look at Psalm 145, it screams one word I love. And you've heard me say it before, and that's the word anticipation. I've taught you the sign for that umpteen times, anticipation. Facial expressions are important. Anticipation It's not like, mm, you know, yeah, anticipation. And we anticipate what God is going to do. So number one, here's reasons why we should anticipate. Can I just say, number one reason, because of the people that are here. People, plural people. Now I want you to watch this. David starts with the first word of this passage is I, okay? So it is, he's in the singular. 
He goes on down in verse number four. He says, one generation. Now we're getting to more people. In verse number six, and men, plural, verse number seven, they shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. You see, I, 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 I like to use words that, again, fall in the negative category and bring them into the positive light. For example, let me give you some examples of that. Addictions, right? When we think of the word addictions, we immediately go to the negative world. All right, we're addicted to, people are addicted to drugs, alcohol, pornography, whatever it is. There's addictions that people have. That's what we usually think. But you know, you can be, you, there's good addictions. The Bible says that the household of Stephanus in 1 Corinthians was addicted to the ministry of the saints. I'm addicted to kissing my wife. That's not wrong. I'm addicted to pizza. Amen. That could be wrong, but I don't think it's wrong, right? Um, there's a lot of good. And be honest, I'm addicted to church. I really am. I can't imagine life without church. I couldn't imagine an underground church. I mean, I've been in services almost every night of my life this summer. Just a few nights off here and there, but camps and conferences, camps, we're in church all the time, singing all the time, testifying all the time, praise God all the time. I mean, you have to get addicted to that. Either that or you're going to be very depressed all the time. I mean, I mean, it's, it's an addiction, right? How about this word, contagious, contagious? We think of the word contagious, oh, we think of COVID, we think of the cold, we think of the flu. But did you know that there's other things that are contagious too? A smile is, watch us, just start smiling. Everybody smiled in this section except JC. And you just kind of go around the room and you just smile and it just, you, you can't, I challenge you to do it, go into a bank sometime or go into a doctor's office, just start smiling and people will automatically start smiling back. And so David is saying here, I don't care what anybody else does, I don't, I'm not worried about what anybody else does, I, me, David, will bless the Lord. It's future tense. He says in verse one, I will extol thee my God, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee. And the reason we choose to have miserable days is because we decided to choose to focus on the wrong things. Every day we wake up, we can focus on the right things and thank God. Think about the testimony of those Christians who are saying, you don't have to mark me. I'm going to mark myself. I mean, we had Christians hiding out because of a, of a sickness that, that we know now didn't kill as many people as we thought it was going to, Right? I'm not being mean or ugly. I'm just trying to make us see the point there, the difference of where we're at as Christians today. But the spirit of anticipation is a game changer. If Christians today, if marriages today, if homes today would live with the spirit of anticipation, expecting and looking forward to God doing great things, he might just do them. Right? I, I just thankful for the people here. And you see here, it says it becomes a contagious thing, church. BBC needs to be known as a church that praises God. BBC needs to be known as a church that preaches the gospel. BBC needs to be known as a church that has the right kind of spirit. And when people come in here, they're not going to be rained upon, or they're not going to be ignored or rejected. BBC needs to be a, a church that acts like Christ. Last week, as a, as a camp in Wisconsin, I preached for Pastor Hallett, and, and a young man was there, and he had tattoos all over his arms, and he had the, the typical look that you see him, and he came out of a rough life. And I was sitting with him at dinner one night, and he said, I tried, when I, he said, I got saved in the military. And when I came back, I tried to find so many churches to go to, and everybody rejected me because of the way I look. I was just rejected. He said, until I met Pastor Hallett. He said, this pastor loved me, took me in. I said, how about that, a pastor that acts like Jesus? Isn't that something? It still works. It still works to, to let this community know that there's a church that cares for you and loves you. And we don't apologize for the truth. We're going to preach the truth. We're going to preach it with a smile on our face. Hey, the people of this church get me excited and anticipating great things that are coming, especially this Wednesday night crowd, because you guys are the cream of the crop. You're the ones that, that hold the whole thing together. Thank God. And that, that's why I have a spirit of anticipation. Now, number two, real quickly, look at this one. I get excited in the spirit of anticipation because of the potential here. Potential. All right, why is there potential? All right, look at verse number Three real quickly. The Bible says this, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy, next word, works uh, to another, and shall declare thy mighty what? Acts, all right? Verse number five, And I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Works, acts. The potential is great. 
This, this country has 330 plus million people. Over 10,000 independent Baptist churches. But God chose this church to give two nice buses to yeah. right now for such a time as this. Well, someone might say, oh, it's just a coincidence or it's because he knows, he knows. No, I think God gave those two buses to us. You exactly know why, preacher? No, I don't. But I can't wait to see. He doesn't just give us two buses for no reason. Do you see what I'm saying here, church? He's not going to just give us that building for no reason. The potential ought to get us excited, church. I mean, I don't know exactly know what's going to happen there three or four years from now if Jesus tarries. And if Jesus raptures, who cares? The Antichrist can have the building and play all he wants. I mean, he can have everything. He can have the buses and everything. Whatever, right? But, but the point I'm trying to make is this. God's given us these facilities, the property, the buses now. I mean, he's given us so many things. It's, God doesn't just do that unless he's planning on doing something with that. You see, David was faithful as a shepherd. He obeyed his father. He became an expert as a slingshot. He killed a bear and a lion, and nobody knew his name. But when the time came and a giant needed taken out of the way, God raised up a David. Why? Because he'd already had the slingshot. He'd already had the stones. He'd already killed a bear and a lion. And I'm simply saying, God is saying, there's some giants out there. There's some blessings out there. But I'm giving you the tools right now. See it. Anticipate it. Pray about it. Get excited about it. And watch God do great things today. I don't know what he's going to do next year. I don't know. A preacher asked me years ago, he mean, or about two, three years ago, he said, and you've been preaching at your church for 20 years. What keeps you so excited every Sunday morning? I said, because this could be the Sunday that something huge happens. And you say, some huge things have happened. Yeah, but maybe another huge thing will happen. Sure. I mean, this could be the Sunday, right? But what if it doesn't? Then I guess it could be next Sunday. What if it doesn't happen the whole month of September? Then it might happen in October. The point I'm trying to make is this. God is a carrot God. He likes to hold that carrot in front of you. And when you see it, you get excited and you keep reaching for it and reaching for it and reaching for it. And then sometimes he lets you get it. And you taste it and you're like, wow, that's amazing. Then he says, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it. And then you get it and you taste it and you say, that's amazing. And then you reach for it and you reach for it and you reach for it. And that's what this is, that building is there. And the two buses that we got and the other black bus we've got and all those things are reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it. What is he going to do? I don't know, but I'm excited about it. Anticipate it, church. Anticipate it. I have, since my, all four of my children were born, I've anticipated great things from their lives. I just did. I had big dreams for them. I didn't share it with them, but I, I talked to them in such a way that their future is bright. Their spouses are bright. They're, they're bright. That kind of bright. Maybe. Not until they give me grandchildren, but then after that, they'll be fine, right? Just that spirit of anticipation. Church, we've lost that in America today. We come to church defeated. We come to church discouraged. We come to church with umpteen reasons on why we should be upset and mad and frustrated and critical. And we find all these reasons in church. Can I just remind you of something? Because I struggle with it too. Every second we spend complaining or meditating on that which is negative is a, is a second that's gone forever that we could have spent on praising God for the blessings he gives to us. You've heard me say it many times. I'm just in a bad mood. Well, get yourself out of the bad mood. If you have the potential to be in a bad mood, you have the potential to be in a good mood. Somebody say amen right there, right? I mean, it's time to stop the cop-outs and, and justifying our behavior. The Bible's very clear in its commands, church. Well, I had a hard day. Well, don't let it down on your wife and kids. Come on, somebody help me tonight. Can I just say it tonight? Anticipation. Instead of complaining, find a reason to praise. Instead of thinking about the poison ivy, thank God you're going to have mushrooms on your steak tonight. The people, the potential, number three. And that leads to a spirit of praise. So because of the anticipation, you can praise God right now. Right now. I don't know what God's going to do next month or next year or two years from now. I don't know. But I can praise God right now because I know what he has done two years ago, last year, last month, and right now. So you see that David has that spirit. He says, I will, future tense, I will, I will. But he also says this. He says, every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. When it's all said and done, this message is simply a challenge to practice for heaven. Because if we are professional complainers, you're going to have to retire from that job when you get to heaven someday. You're not, we're not going to be allowed to complain in heaven. We'll have no reason to complain in heaven, right? 
And look, I'm not trying to be mean over here. I complain. We all struggle with that stuff. But I am telling you this. The challenge is to strive to change our mindset today. And, and, and we wonder why people are struggling with so much anxiety and depression and negativity and hatred and bitterness and, and strife in America today. And Christians are fighting with each other, and it's embarrassing the cause of Christ today. God's people, tonight I have to declare this, should be the happiest people on the planet. If, if I'm wrong, name another group of people that should be happier than us. Name one. I'm, I'm open. Who's got one? From the floor. What group of, what people group should be happier than we are tonight? Who? 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 I mean, I, I'm open. If I'm wrong, I'll stand corrected. But last I checked, Christians, God's people should be the happiest people on the planet. Not perfect. Not always 100% time in a good when I get all that stuff. But we should be, as a whole, the happiest people on the planet. Why? Because God's our Father. We've been saved from hell. We've been forgiven. Our sins are gone. We're children of the King. We're going to heaven someday. We really get to go. I'm never going to touch hell. I mean, I have a Bible. Can I go a little further? I don't have a government coming down to kill me tonight or my wife and kids because I'm preaching Jesus tonight. God, forgive me if I complain about piddly things. God, forgive my backslidden soul if I complain about something as foolish as someone cutting me off, which I do oftentimes. It's silliness. The point I'm trying to make is just this. Hey, church, listen. The spirit of anticipation helps with a lot of that. It helps with a lot of that. The, the old definition in the Webster's 1828 dictionary for the word enthusiasm, that's, another, that's a sign for enthusiasm too in sign language, is spirit-filled Christian. Isn't that amazing? Way back in the 1800s when Webster was writing his dictionary, he looked upon the Christians and was trying to figure out a way to explain the word enthusiasm. And he chose spirit-filled Christians. Today, the dictionary doesn't use that definition. And today, I wonder if Webster's alive today. He wrote, rewrote the dictionary. Would he be able to use the average Christian in America today? I'm not trying to be mean or ugly here tonight. I'm just saying this world out there, for the next few months and years, is going to need us to show them what the people of God do when they realize their potential and they praise God on a regular basis. They need it. Hedge about Isaac Thank you for listening so well tonight. Hello, Pastor Randy Dignan here from Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm going to take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter 3 by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with, face to face with, one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this, where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. Well, good thing for Nicodemus, he came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven. But the fact is we got to find out what God says about eternal things. And that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital. Because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this. You must be born again. In John chapter 3, that's what he said to Nicodemus. And that's the same thing he says to you and to me even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We all are physically born under this physical planet. Or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I'd be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin.
so that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute and more so than that, our personal Savior and know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now in that God becomes our Father, we become His sons, daughters, we become His children, and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says, what I have ideas about, or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible, and in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again. If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we can give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless, and make it a great day.